So let's try to solve the equation square root x minus 1 equals x minus 3. So we can solve this equation by squaring both sides. So over on the left hand side we have the square of a square root which will eliminate the square root leaving us with just x minus 1. Over on the right hand side we have x minus 3 squared so we'll expand that and we'll get a new equation x minus 1 equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. Since this is a quadratic equation we have an x squared we'll want to get all of our terms onto one side so over on the left hand side we have an x and so we'll get rid of it by subtracting an x. We have a minus 1 so we'll get rid of it by adding 1. And we have to do the same thing to both sides, so we'll subtract x and add 1 to the right-hand side as well. And that gives us our new equation. And since this is a quadratic equation, we can solve it. We'll use the quadratic formula, so we know that our equation has coefficient of x squared equal to 1, coefficient of x equal to minus 7, and constant coefficient equal to 10. So we'll place these values in the quadratic formula, and then simplify. And that gives us our solutions 5 or 2. Now the disadvantage of the quadratic formula is that it always works on any type of quadratic and doesn't require a lot of trial and error. But if you want something that doesn't always work, doesn't always apply, and involves a lot of extra work, we could try to factor. So we want x squared minus 7x plus 10 to be the product of two things. Our first terms have to multiply out to x squared, so they have to be x and x. Our second terms have to multiply out to plus 10, so they've got to be a, b, where a, b is equal to 10. And we list every possible pair of numbers that multiply to 10. And at this point, the only thing we can do is to try every one of these until we either find a factorization or determine that none of them work. So let's try 1 and 10. So we want to see if x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to the product x plus 1 times x plus 10. So we'll expand, simplify, and they are not equal. So we try our next possibilities, minus 1 and minus 10. So we want to see if x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 10. So we expand and find that they are not equal. Third time's the charm, so 2 and 5 have to work. So we'll check it out, though. x plus 2 times x plus 5 is going to be... not equal. Since the universe is a kind and gentle place, we know that negative 2 and negative 5 have to be the solution, so we won't even bother to check them. Um, I would. Let's check it out. Do we actually get a factorization x minus 2 times x minus 5? We'll expand. And we find that we are in fact successful. But we're not done yet. All we did was factor x squared minus 7x plus 10. We have not yet solved the equation. So we have to go through another step. Our equation is x squared minus 7x plus 10. And all the work that we just did gave us the factorization for the left-hand side. We have product equal to 0. So we know that one of the factors is 0. Either x minus 2 is 0, and we can solve, giving us our solution x equals 2. Or the other factor, x minus 5, is equal to 0, so we can solve, 
giving us the other solution, x equals 5. And it doesn't really matter how we solve it, we get the same answer either way. We can either use the quadratic equation, which will give us our solution immediately and for all possible quadratics, or we could go through trial and error factorization and plus this additional step to possibly solve it as long as our quadratic is factorable. In a kind and gentle universe, you'd always get factorable quadratics. Unfortunately, we don't live in that universe. You're probably better off using the quadratic formula. One important thing to remember is that because we squared a square root, it's possible we introduce some extraneous solutions. And in general, you should always check your solutions, but this is especially true if the equations are more complicated than a simple linear equation, really. Uh, however we solve the equation, we must check to see if the solutions are extraneous. So if x equals 2, we'll substitute this into our original equation and see if we truly get a true statement. We'll simplify. And at this point, it's useful to remember that the principal square root of n is never negative. So we know that this statement, principal square root of 1, possibly equal to negative 1, is false. So x equals 2 is not a solution. We can say that x equals 2 is an extraneous solution. The other possibility we have is x equals 5. So if x is equal to 5, we'll substitute. We'll simplify. And principal square root of 4 is 2, so x equals 5 does give us a true statement, so x equals 5 is a solution. And if it's not written down, it didn't happen, we might want to say the only solution is x equals 5.